Last week I premiered a new series on forgotten aircraft. However, it has subsequently occurred to me that in fact it was my third such presentation, given my previous videos on the Japanese aircraft, the Narahara No. 2 and the Kaishiki No. 1. Therefore, this is the fourth such forgotten aircraft and pioneer, the helicopter of Paul Cornu. Often forgotten 113 years later, Paul Cornu is often credited with being the first man ever to take off vertically in a heavier-than-air machine. Paul Cornu was born on June 15, 1881, in glos la ferriere France, into a large family that included 12 siblings. He and his family later moved to Lisieux in Normandy, the town most associated with himself and his endeavours. His father ran a bicycle and automobile shop, but had an inclination towards aviation that he passed on to his son, having worked on plans for a dirigible. Showing an early flair for engineering and invention, in 1899 the two designed a rotary engine that was patented in 1902. Paul also invented a steam-powered tricycle, a small car powered by two gas engines but lacking a gearbox or differential, and a temperature controller for incubators. With such a background, it is perhaps not surprising that in 1905 he began working on flying machines. However, it is surprising that he elected to focus on helicopters. The concept of the helicopter wasn't exactly new, Leonardo da Vinci having famously sketched an example some 400 years previously. The word itself was invented in 1861 by Gustave Ponton d'Amecourt in a patent for a small aluminium model driven by the steam from a coil-shaped boiler. This model, with its two contra-rotating coaxial rotors, is still preserved in the French Aeronautical Museum. By 1906, Paul Cornu had designed and built a model helicopter weighing 13 kilograms and powered by a two-horsepower Boucher engine, consisting mainly of two horizontal propellers. On 4th October 1906, he managed hovering flights. Apparently, he then arranged for a notarized document with 60 signatures attesting to his success. The flight worthiness of his test rig has also been verified through engineering calculations. Of some note is that Paul Cornu was also looking at methods of achieving flight control and forward propulsion, in addition to vertical takeoff. Cornu patented his design, and it is registered as U.S. Patent 902859, filed on September 11, 1906, and issued on November 3, 1908. His goal at this point was winning the Deutsche Arsteck Prize of 50,000 francs for the first flight of one kilometer. To that end, he built a full-sized machine. Through vertical shafts and belts, his 24-horsepower Antoinette engine drove two large spoked wheels less than two feet ahead of and behind the engine. A two-blade propeller was fastened to each wheel, the blades built of spars and ribs all covered with fabric and mounted with substantial dihedral. At each end of the propeller, two similar blades were mounted as stabilizers. The pilot sat behind the engine on a four-wheel chassis. In order to cancel torque, the rotors were counter-rotating. The helicopter was finished in August 1907, and on the last day of the month, hovered unmanned with the engine turning at only 750 rpm, and the propellers at only 70 rpm. Further tests were made starting in October. Of some 300 attempts, though, only 15 were reported satisfactory. On 3rd November 1907, with Cornu at the controls, the machine is said to have taken off and hovered at a height of 30 centimetres, or 1 foot, for about 20 seconds, the engine turning at 850 rpm with a gross weight of 260 kilograms. On the 26th of March 1908, he was again reported to have flown at Coquainvillière near pont leveque Normandy, this time in front of 200 people. As the wind was strong, Cornu asked one of his brothers, Jacques, to secure the helicopter by holding it. It was claimed finally to have taken off with both men aboard, hovering in the gusts of wind with difficulty about one and a half meters off the ground. 
the gross weight was then 328 kilograms. Unfortunately, there are no photographs of this event. Subsequent engineering analysis of the rather derisively named flying bicycle have claimed that it could not have achieved flight clear of the ground effect, which is not an unreasonable conclusion, as the difficulty experienced during testing seems to suggest that his helicopter was underpowered, possibly requiring at least a 40 horsepower engine for true flight. A combination of ground effect and wind conditions probably contributed to his groundbreaking achievement. Despite this success, he was never to achieve his goal. On January 13, 1908, Henri Farman won the Deutsche Architect Prize by successfully flying one kilometer in 1 minute 28 seconds in his 1907 Voisin. Apparently, this disheartened Cornu to the extent that he ceased further work on his helicopter. Nonetheless, he published an article presenting the technical details of his machine in the newspaper L'Aerophile of April 15, 1908, this being the first newspaper for aviation. His last aeronautical project, the so-called Helicoplane, a kind of helicopter-aircraft hybrid, was presented at the Air Transport International Exhibition in Paris at the end of 1908, with the hope of attracting an investor. In this, he was not successful. After World War I, during which he was drafted as a medic, he kept his mechanics workshop but set up a new business specializing in wireless telegraphy. He still showed a strong interest in aeronautics and sometimes participated in the specialized weekly Les Ailes. Paul Cornu was killed in his hometown of Lisieux on June 6, 1944, during an Allied bombardment leading up to the D-Day landings. He was 62. Although he only succeeded in flying for a short while, there is great significance in Cornu's work, in his systematic and scientific attempts to understand the relationship between rotor thrust and power requirements, and in exploring methods of controlling a helicopter in flight and in its forward propulsion. In 2007, in order to commemorate the centenary of his achievement, two non-flying replicas were built. One is on display at the Musée de l'Air et de l'Espace in Le Bourget near Paris, France, the other at the Hubschrauber Museum Bucherberg in Germany.